Hey there YouTube, this is Jimmy with Two the Top Crane. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about shackles. I had uh, one of my subscribers was asking some questions on shackles. And then also some different rigging or ways to use shackles. So I figured I'd cover that real quick. This will be a pretty fast video. But uh, first question. When this shackle is in a hook, which end is up? So if your crane hook is on this end, do you put the rounded end in the hook or the pin end? So the answer to that, the pin always goes in the hook. Always. The hook is always around the pin. If, uh, if the shackle is too wide and it wants to rock, like say it was sitting like this, your hook was coming up right here, it is permissible to put some washers on each side to keep it evenly spaced and have the hook hanging or having the shackle hanging straight on the hook. The reason for that is the shackle is designed to support all of its load between these two points. So right around this radius. That's why Crosby puts 45 degree angle markings on the shackle. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. So this shackle is designed to be loaded from here to here on this side and on the pin. If you had this flipped over and this was in the hook, it could hang sideways. Or if you had more than one piece of rigging on here, then you'd be pulling at an angle like this. And I'll show you here in a second. So pin always goes in the hook. Always, always, always. No exceptions to that. His other question was, if you had this involved in some rigging, does the pin have to be towards the hook? Well, I'll, I'm going to shut the camera off for a second. I'm going to throw some rigging in the shackle and uh, show you why or why not. Okay, as you can see, I've got some rigging shoved in the shackle here. I've got one strap over the pin. And you can do this with steels or whatever. It's just whatever rigging you're using. And then I've got one strap coming out of the bottom. So the load is between our two marks and it would be pulling straight on the shackle. So the question was, does the pin need to be towards the hook? In this situation, it doesn't matter if it's at the top or the bottom because the shackle's seeing the same load regardless. I've had people argue and say, well, you got to always have the pin towards the hook. I don't know what difference that that would make. The biggest thing when you're using, a lot of times you would use this to like length, lengthen your rigging out if you didn't have long enough straps and you just needed to get extra length. If you uh, watch that video of my air handler that we set on the building, we had 40 feet of rigging. So we had two 20 foot, uh, three inch or four inch flat straps connected together. And this is how we did it. So the big thing with this is your shackle has to be oriented in a straight line. It cannot be rigged like this. You can tell that we're outside of our 45 degree marks. And at this point, you'd be trying to pull that shackle apart or trying to pull it open. A shackle is not rated to hold a load sideways. It's only rated to hold a load vertically vertically or within these marks and I'm, I'm gonna keep referencing these marks because um, I have seen people that have rigged stuff that it was way out and if your sling, sling angle is that far out each sling is going to have more than the weight of the load on each leg I hope that makes sense so if this was rigged like this we're going to do a little pretending here so our hook was in the top of the shackle where it's supposed to be. But our rigging was so short that we had this kind of sling angle. Once you get to 30 degrees, each leg has more than the weight of the load on it. So if we were picking something that weighed 1,000 pounds using this, this sling angle and rigging method, each leg would have more than 1,000 pounds on it. So hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. And then I'm gonna show one more, one more uh, thing here in a second. So I'm gonna shut the camera off. I'm gonna throw another piece of rigging in it. 
and show you what a shackle is actually designed for. Okay, you can see I've got I've got a strap in the top that's connected on the pin, and then I've got two coming out the bottom. So what a shackle is actually designed for is it gives you a connection point to attach two legs to a single point. So like say we had a piece that had four pick points on it. We could have this shackle here with two legs on it, and we could have another set up just like it next to it. Put both of these straps in the hook so we would go from two points to a four point pick. So if we had two more shackles down here, then we would ultimately end up with four points to rig onto our piece. So that's, that's what a shackle is actually designed for. Also, uh, you can use a shackle on the hook. We have to on our big block sometimes. Uh, sometimes your rigging won't fit in the hook because the eye of the choker or whatever is too small. So you have to use a shackle to get a smaller attachment point because the hook's so big. But in that case, hook would be here and then we'd put our choker out here on the bottom. But the reason why this pin always has to be in the hook is so this shackle hangs straight down and that gives you the proper loading area in the bottom of the shackle. So hopefully that clears some stuff up for everybody. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anything. I'm sure there'll be someone that'll throw a comment in like, hey, what about such and such? Well, I'll, I'll address that when I get the comment, I guess. But um, yeah, I want to cover that real quick. All right, one more thing I'm going to talk about, about shackles, and I forgot about it. And I get this question a lot. This pin, when you tighten it down, do you tighten it all the way until it's tight? Or do you tighten it all the way and back it off? So if you tighten it all the way down, and Crosby, Crosby's way of doing it is they tell you to tighten it all the way down. They say they put this hole in there so you can stick a spud wrench in it and break it loose or you can stick a crescent on there and break it loose. Um, but if you tighten this all the way down then you pick a load, a lot of times it will inherently tighten itself. And then it is sometimes very difficult to get this apart. Now I was always trained that you tighten it down and then you back it off just a little bit and, uh, and go with it. And the reason for that is because a lot of times you're spinning these in and out um, pretty frequently when you're rigging stuff. And a lot of times you don't have a tool with you to pop that, pop that pin loose. So we were always taught to back it off. Now, there's going to be someone out there that says, well, you can't do that. What if it unscrews itself and comes apart? Valid argument, I suppose, or valid point. I'm going to take this strap out you guys can see how far that's threaded I'm gonna run this all the way in and then I guess we can count the turns to get it all the way backed out okay so that's all the way in that's tight let's say we backed it off about a quarter okay so that's backed off a quarter so there's a half a turn, there's one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five, half, six, half, seven. So seven full turns to take that pin out. And that's with no weight on it. We've got a... You can see that, that's a 13 and a half ton shackle. That's what that's rated for. So I'm willing to bet if you had that pin screwed all the way in and backed off a quarter turn and had 13 and a half tons hanging on it, you wouldn't be able to turn that pin. Now, there are times when I will run it in tight and leave it. And if I'm gonna have it hanging on the hook for quite a while, then I will snug it up. I'll even throw a crescent on it and just snug it up a little bit. That way, when it's rocking back and forth with no, no weight hanging on it, you don't have to worry about it working its way out. You can even throw a piece of tie wire through here and uh, lock that in place so it can unscrew. But if I've got it hanging in the hook and I'm gonna leave it there, 
then I will snug this up. If I'm doing repetitive rigging where I'm flying units or um, trusses or you know something where I'm going to be unhooking it, hooking it back up, unhooking it, hooking it back up, I'm not going to run that pin all the way down. It takes a lot of time and realistically that pin's not going to unscrew itself seven full turns and come apart. And you should be checking your rigging every pick anyway. So a good rigger will keep an eye on that kind of stuff. But anyway, I've rambled on enough about shackles. It is sweltering hot in here. Um, I'm gonna put this stuff away. So another thing I'll add to that too, um, all those scenarios, that's a perfect world. People have got to understand that sometimes there are situations where your standard rigging practice isn't gonna work. You, know, you might get a unit that the pick points just, you got no choice but to just shove a shackle through it and make something fit and go with it. And really in this line of work, you have to have some pretty decent common sense. And uh, it's all a calculated risk, every bit of it. So with that being said, you may occasionally see something in a, in a video it may, may be a different channel, maybe my channel. And you're like, hey, that doesn't follow rigging practice. Well, in a perfect world, everything would have pick points on it mounted right on top. The center of gravity would be um, located already for you. You would have exact weights on everything. You wouldn't have to ha hand calculate it. You would have a 14 inch thick concrete, perfectly level pad, 40 foot square to set the crane up on. And that stuff just doesn't exist. So there are times when you have to be a little creative with rigging and make something work. Um, is that the best practice out there? Not necessarily. Is it the worst? Also not necessarily. Like I said, everything that we do has an inherent calculated risk in it. You do your best to mitigate those risks, but they're always there. So. You know, like I said, and here's a prime example. I'm gonna walk over to this block. Here's the shackle. Well, we obviously can't put this in the hook. This is a pick point on our block. So the shackle pin is through here. As long as our rigging's long enough to stay within our 45 degree angle, we're good. But there's a lot of people out there that say, well, that pin's gotta be facing, the, facing towards the hook to make your pick. Well, that's impossible. And there's a lot of stuff like that. Pick points are in different locations or whatever. So, you know, like I said, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn from the book, but you also gotta be able to adapt. And you gotta be smart enough to know where to draw the line. So a lot of common sense in operating heavy equipment and uh, especially rigging with cranes and operating cranes.